Uh, so just to address something at the start of this video that I haven't actually said on the channel yet, uh, rest in peace Stan Lee. Uh, really, really crappy news, but on the other hand, he was 95 years old. Like This guy lived a life. Um, yeah, I didn't want to do just a video on Stan Lee's death because for me, whenever I do a video, it's with the hope of getting likes and subscriptions off the back of it. It's kind of why I do this and obviously to communicate and chat with people as well. But if I was doing a video based on Stan Lee, a part of me would feel like I'm using that to try and get views and yeah i'm not cool with that and that's not saying everybody does it it would just be in the back of my mind so i didn't want to make a video just on that subject but at the same time i didn't want to not say anything about it at all because man the things that guy's given us the amount of characters and things what a legacy he leaves behind um yeah rest in peace stanley and thanks for everything um on that note let's talk about a really boring movie <laughs> Starring amongst others, Eddie Redmayne, Catherine Waterson, Dan Fogler, Alison Sudol, Ezra Miller, Zoe Kravitz, Jude Law and Johnny Depp. Directed by David Yates off of a screenplay by J.K. Rowling. This is my review for Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Wald. Grindelwald. Grind Grindel... Grindel something about that. I think it's Grindelwald. Is it? Or is it Grindelwald? I'm losing track because it seems to be said different ways throughout this movie. So the crime to Grindelwald picks up after the events of the first movie. Some time has passed and Grindelwald, that's what we're going to call him, he escapes. He's out in the ether and it's down to Newt and his friends along with a little help from Albus Dumbledore to track him down. Um, so this is the first Harry Potter movie, or Wizarding World movie at least, that I've reviewed for this channel. Um, I wasn't. This channel wasn't operating for the first Fantastic Beasts, so um, this is the first time. So I kind of think it's important to give a bit of perspective on where I am with the Harry Potter franchise and how big a fan I am. Um, I like it. I like them all. I've got the box set, I've got all the books, um, consider buying the 4K set, but waiting to pay for, so I can't really afford to do it just yet. So I'm, I'm that level of fan. I don't know all of the details intricately, but I enjoy the stories. Uh, Mel, on the other hand, absolutely loves everything Harry Potter. It was actually a little sad to see her at the end of this particular film, just to see how disappointed she was with what she saw. And it's a tricky one, because I like the cast in this quite a bit. Even Johnny Depp, who is an actor I think has become very, very boring over recent years. There hasn't been a Johnny Depp performance that's really engaged me since probably the first Pirates movie, to be honest. So I wasn't looking forward to him in this particular role, but I think he does well with what he had to work with. And that same thing applies to pretty much every single cast member here. They're all fine. They all do good work, or at least they do as well as they can. And um, the directing's great. I think David Yates, he knows his way around the visiting world by now. He knows how to make it look good. And this film does, at times, look great. It has some very good set pieces in it. It just looks like a very, very polished movie. The problem with it stems, and I hate to say it, entirely, I think, from J.K. Rowling's script. Because this, to me, is a movie that... It was designed just to position characters into certain places and to set up a reveal that will move us into the third movie. And that's fine to a degree, like characters have to be put into certain places, I get that. But the actual film itself needs to have a reason for being other than just set up. And this doesn't have that. It feels like a movie that exists just to be padding. And it really, really, it's hard not to think that through so much of what goes on, because if you cast your mind back after seeing this to what's actually happened in the film, it's not a lot. It's not a lot at all. There's a few, as I say, important character moments, but the actual story and the actual majority of the screen time isn't really that necessary. I really did just come out of this feeling like I just watched some kind of extended tease for whatever the third Fantastic Beast movie is called. And as a result, this is, by quite some way, I think, the weakest of the Wizarding World movies. Like, it is. There's no getting around that. This is the weakest in story. It's the weakest in terms of character, even though I say there are some character moments that are important. It just doesn't feel that like there was enough here to justify it being an entire movie let alone one that clocks in over two hours. Like, this is a long film that doesn't really have much to do. And I don't get that. It should have been a lot shorter, it should have been a lot tighter, and there should have been more to it. There should have been more substance to this film. It's called The Grimes of Grindelwald, whatever his name is. But there's not really a lot of him. There's not a lot of his crimes. It's also called Fantastic Beasts. There's not a lot of Fantastic Beasts in this one. Uh, there's one particular beast that I think is pretty fantastic. So yeah, there's one. And there's a couple of smaller ones that pop up. But the whole Fantastic Beast part of this, well, there isn't really that much. There isn't really that much of it at all. It's more focused on this ongoing mystery as to over who this particular character is, which is Ezra Miller's Credence. That's the driving force of this film, is finding out who he is. But the problem is I 
couldn't care less who Credence is because as good an actor as I think Ezra Miller is, he probably gets the least to work with out of everybody. And say he's fine in the role, but he has nothing. This character is so bare bones. There's nothing to him, and it's kind of a side effect of him not knowing who he is. But at the same time, he still lived a life. He should have some character about him, something that makes us connect with him. He doesn't. He doesn't at all. So when the eventual reveal does come, I didn't feel anything about it. It should have been a big shocking moment. This is spoiler free. I'm not going to say what it was, but it wasn't. It was just, okay, all right, so this is the third movie now, is it? And, and don't get me wrong, it's interesting. I'm interested to see where they go with it, but I can't get any excitement for the next film now because this one just left me so cold. There's plot holes all over the place. There's one in particular, and it's a spoilery one to say, so I can't talk about it, but it involves Dumbledore and Grindelwald. Um, it involves those two characters and something that happened in their past. And um, when we get told what that was, it doesn't make any sense with what else is going on with the film. And that's just one example. It seems like J.K. Rowling's dropped the ball. She's forgot to look at the smaller details of things. And that's a real shame because she is a talented actress. And I can't help but feel at this stage that... I'm not saying I want her to be George Lucas out of the franchise at all. But I think she needs somebody else to come on board to script these things. Because her books are great. Yeah, the first Fantastic Beast movie... I quite liked, but it was lacking that certain something. But this just goes even further down in towards bad territory. I genuinely do think she needs somebody else to come on board. I don't want her removed entirely from this. I say this isn't a George Lucas situation. We're not there yet. But I do think she needs somebody else. Somebody else to help her fine-tune things. She's got the story. She just doesn't seem to be able to put it into a coherent script. I mean, yeah, this is kind of a negative review. But there are some positives to have. I've mentioned a few of them already. But Jude Law, I think, is great as Dumbledore. He doesn't he's not in it that much which is a real shame because from the moment he appears on the screen it's clear he's going to be a bright spot hope he gets a lot more to do going forward and he should do i think but yeah i really hope he does because i loved him in this one and there's some nice the harry potter easter eggs it gets to a point where it feels a little bit like just fan service now like a reference in there just to please the fans rather than advance the story but we get to see Hogwarts, we get to hear the Harry Potter music again as it pans over the school. That was a lovely moment. So there are things to enjoy. There are things to take away Fantastic Beasts as, as positives, but the negatives just far outweigh it. And the thing that I can't escape from is just how boring this is. How little happens. How long it takes just prancing around certain things that aren't that interesting. This movie doesn't have a story of its own to exist. As I say, it's there to set up what's to come, but it doesn't focus on the actual now. It doesn't focus on what makes the crimes of Grindelwald a good film. And as a result, it's not a good film. It misses the marks in so many ways, and it's just such a shame that this is a Wizarding World movie. This is a movie in the Harry Potter universe that frankly sucks. I'm just pleased there are a few things that I enjoyed. I'm pleased I didn't come out hating it, but I came out severely disappointed. And as I say, Mel loves Harry Potter. I just like it, but she adores it. And I think she was more disappointed than me. And I do just want to say something about Eddie Redmayne as well, because I think he's a fantastic actor. And I genuinely, even in this one, love the character of Newt. Um, I thought this was going to be a series of films around Newt. I thought it was going to be his story. But it seemed increasingly like that's not the case. He's just a character along for the ride. It's not his journey. And I think that's a real shame. I can think he's more than capable of leading this. I expected him to be the Harry Potter of this particular story. And he's not. He's a bit part. He's a, he's a bystander, really, in everything that's going on. And I really hope he gets to become a bit more of a focus in the next God knows how many films we're going to get at this. Because that's what I wanted. He's great. Eddie Redmayne in this one brings just a really nice touches to the character of Newt. He's endearing. He's very, very likeable, even though he's a little bit strange. And I like that about him. There's a certain quirkiness that really makes that character come to life. And it should be his story. It should be his journey that we're following, but it's just seeming more and more that like he's just getting swept up in other people's stories rather than having one of his own. And I do hope that gets addressed. I'm going to give Fantastic Beast: The Crimes of Grindelwald, or Vault, or Walt, a 5 out of 10. So yeah, 5 out of 10. Smack bang in the middle. Very, very average, this. At times it's bad, at times it's good, but for the most part, it's so unfocused, it's so disjointed, and it's so messy and dull, and it's such a shame. But what did you think of The Crimes of Grindelwald? Let me know in the comments below and let me know your favourite Harry Potter movie or book as well. And where do you think this franchise should go? If you were as disappointed with it as I am, how do you think it can be saved? What do you think they can do to put it back on track? Because I'm not giving up on Fantastic Beasts at all. I, I trust in J.K. Rowling's storytelling skills to be able to craft something very, very interesting. But yeah, I'm kind of... 
a bit worried about what's going to happen. But tell me where you'd like to see the films go. Let's talk about this. Uh, do hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more of them. More reviews coming soon as well, including Robin Hood, um, which I think is going to be another big disappointment if what I'm hearing is true. I'll let you know tomorrow. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Joe Julians. That's also my name on Stardust. Feel free to follow me on there as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.